everybody, I'm Bruce Walter with Human Life Midwest. With me behind the camera is Augie. Um, we wanted to do a, a small training video. This is going to be a short one, I promise you. But on pillars and seawall tie-ins, okay? Um, I've always believed in the past, no matter what the material is when you're building a pillar and tying into the seawall, integrate those two components together. Again, we talk about the mass load and the weight of a pillar, all right? So integrating the seawall into it to help stabilize that pillar from any kind of movement away from your seat wall. Basically, thus preventing any kind of gap that might form between the end of your seat wall and the beginning of the pillar. So with your car, how do we do that, all right? So, got a little mock up here on the first course and I'll bend down to show you how we're gonna achieve this, uh, this installation technique. Here with our base plates. I don't wanna neglect the importance of the base plates because here at my connection point between the pillar and between the seat wall, I'm supported here by this base plate, okay? So very important that we have that in our pillar construction and continuing that through into the base plate of the seat wall area to support both of these together at that same point of contact. All right, a couple things here. In our pillar construction, we've got our four courses of large backer laid out, all right? Veneered with full panels, all right? Um, and here I've identified a center point only because this seat wall I'm gonna position at that center point, all right? It could be moved to one end or another. Perhaps if I have a paver here and I wanna hit that number, all right, to clean out my insulation on my paver insulation, I might potentially move that out of play. Doesn't really matter, but here for this, application we're just going true center all right I've marked that easy to align my tongue to that point so I install this first backer here the standard backer to begin my seat wall construction okay second principle here is just to again course number one is going to be four full block four full veneer fascia panels all right course number two though I'm going to treat a little bit differently here is where I'm going to integrate my pillar, and I'm gonna integrate it a little bit more here on the fascia panel, all right? So here I've got a standard backer. This one is cut because I'm establishing half bond here on my seat wall, all right? You're gonna also notice that I've chiseled off this top tongue. And the reason is because course number three is gonna replicate course number one. I'm gonna have a fascia panel coming over this, all right? So. Here, what we're gonna do on second course, I'm gonna establish bond and take my cut all the way in to my, my backer here. Let me lay that second backer up and give you that indication here. So here on my second backer. So I am gonna have one cut of this standard panel to establish my bond here on that seat wall to that point, all right? What I'm gonna show you is if you'll come with me, I've got a cut already made and you can kind of see the aesthetics of it, right? So here's my fascia panel going into that large backer in the interior cavity of the, that pillar unit, all right? Again, my tongue is chiseled off on this backer, that second backer, but then the third course moving forward and advancing the construction at the same time of both the pillar and the seat wall. I'm gonna again do my four corner blocks, veneer that with a fascia panel, Install my backer, all right, and then set my fascia panels here. I usually start at this point, but there you go. We've got a nice clean seam, but we integrate and we lock up, all right? We're supported by the same base plates throughout. So good, easy installation technique when it comes to a 90 degree entry point, but we always don't come to that. So. Here we've got an example of a 45 or perhaps an odd angle corner where we're coming in with our seat wall to the point of the corner contact. Now, a couple things here. Uh, I kind of want you to notice here, it might be a little hard to see, but we've got a fractured edge. So what I'm doing is I'm using our guillotine splitter, our hydraulic splitter basically, because if I have a fractured edge, recognize the fact I don't care what the aesthetics look like on that. I'm gonna veneer over that with the fascia panel. All right, so here I've used the split half to start my bond correctly on a good solid half bond. And then my miter cuts are here. Now before I hang this panel, I think it's important to see how we have kind of a smoother edge here. All right, so what we've done when we mark, we'll mark our edge straight on the paver. I'll do a saw cut on that line 
back that blade out to my 45. So I'm leaving a little bit of material here right at that corner. So I don't have any kind of fracture or uneven cut. So that's kind of been helpful when it comes to cutting your car fish panels with an aggressive angle cut. All right, so that's kind of it. Again, I'm supported here. I'm not necessarily tying in on my 45 degree seat wall entry point to the pillar. All right, but again, I'm supported by that same base plate. That's the key. Thanks for your time today, guys.